in one of the videos that Pyro made about free will and determinism, he was talking about his own personal investment in the idea of will and how, he, how valuable he found it. And, you know, by extension, it sounded as if he couldn't really live without it or without the idea of it. And I responded to that and we had a little bit of an exchange. And I was comparing his relationship to that as uh, uh, the relationship that some theists seem to have to the idea of God or the afterlife. You know, regardless of whether it's real or not, it provides consolation or it provides some other sort of function without which you would find it difficult to get through the day. Uh, you know, and I can kind of, I guess, acknowledge that, if not respect it, I can understand it. But it doesn't really answer the question of whether free will exists or not in any meaningful sense, other than as a belief. Uh, anyway, the, the, that conversation kind of petered out, but I've been doing a little bit of reading about it, and I came across a couple of articles this morning, and it was referring to three studies that have been done, and I'll see if I can find these studies and put them in the description box. Three studies that have been done about the relationship between a belief in free will and uh, right action, moral action, broadly speaking, which I know isn't exactly what Pyro was talking about, but that's how I'm choosing to, to spin it. Um, and these three studies all used a battery of tests, basically survey type tests, each of which measured, um, yeah, kind of measured different kind of moral values. One of which measured the willingness of a person to cheat. Another way which measured um, a person's kind of self-centeredness, you know, whether they were, how self-serving they would be. And another was something to do with, um, I think something to do with empathy or something like that, about how willing a person would be to help somebody else. It was, it was something along those lines anyway. Three different tests. And... Um, and these are quite well-established metrics you can get from these, quite well-established survey processes, which give, uh, you know, historically have given robust results. And those tests were applied to two sets of people. One set of people, I just took the tests, they hadn't been primed, they were just uh, kind of randomly selected, not randomly selected, but selected through proper processes. The other group of, of, of people who had been properly matched to the, to the control group had all been primed by being exposed to some literature and some information about determinism. And I think in at least one of these uh, studies, the priming took the form of reading part of uh, Francis Crick's Astounding Hypothesis, a book which is very kind of physically materialist and, and lays out the case for you know the, the relationship between physical processes and the brain giving rise to consciousness, giving rise to things like will and memory and so on. And, uh, you know, if, if you like, if you choose to read it that way, leading to a very deterministic, physically based understanding of what will is. So as I say, half the, the control group hadn't been exposed to that. The group who were under test had been exposed to it. And then they took the surveys measuring, as I say, those things to do with uh, willingness to cheat, um, empathy and uh, amount of self-serving behavior they carried out. And in all cases, the people who had been exposed to uh, Francis Crick's book, or the primed group, all scored worse in the sense that they all behaved worse than the other group, than the control group. They all showed less empathy, they all showed a willingness to cheat, a greater willingness to cheat, and they all showed um, a, a greater degree of self-servingness, self-serving nature. I think I'm right in saying that. Uh, which is, you know, it's pretty shocking, really. I should just say, of course, it, it, this, these studies made, went to kind of great lengths to say that they weren't saying, it didn't say anything about the existence of free will. That wasn't what the study was about. It was entirely about the belief in the existence of free will. You know, those people who believed in its existence scored more positively as nicer people, if you like, on these trials than people who've been pri primed to doubt the existence of free will. Which is interesting. I suppose I'm trying to relate that to some of the other stuff I've been thinking about. I suspect, I don't know this for sure, but I suspect if you'd done that test 100 years ago, 200 years ago, when instead of talking about free will, you talked about God. And you'd, and you'd you know, you got the control group of you know, just your standard believers, not necessarily religious maniacs, just standard believers. And then you got another group who'd have been exposed to some of the arguments against the existence of God. Maybe they got to read a bit of um, 
origin species and then they did that to those surveys I wouldn't be at all surprised if the people who had been primed to think in atheistic terms again scored less I wouldn't be at all surprised you know if they showed less empathy in those they showed a more a greater willingness to cheat a greater willingness to be self-serving but it's all in the detail isn't it it's all in the interpretation of those results and I think they, I think those results come out the way they do because of how we think nature acts and we're probably right about this I have to say but not so much just nature but the physical world actually I should distinguish between those two things nature first then the physical world beyond you know when we do think about nature I think we for, for pretty good reasons do think about it being read in, in tooth and claw and do think about it being a survival of the fittest and do think about it being essentially self-serving you know if not yeah, I think we take the selfish gene idea at face value and probably wrongly interpret it. You know, I think there is a tendency to associate um, cognitive abilities like free will as in opposition to purely biological tendencies. And then, um, and by inference and by extension, we associate biological tendencies with the negatives and cognitive tendencies with the positive. So if we strip away the cognitive attitude like free will, then we're kind of thrown back on our biology. We feel, I think with this, I think we feel we're thrown back on our biology and suddenly we become, uh, you know, we bec it becomes a game of survival of the fittest all of a sudden and we start thinking it's okay to cheat and we start thinking it's okay to behave selfishly and so on. It's a misreading of nature a little bit, I think. Not an entire misreading, but it's also a misreading of the, the function of will, really. That if you get rid of that part of the machinery, the whole cognitive mechanism collapses and we have to just be bodies again, we have to just be animals again. Uh, which isn't the case. But also I think, um, yes, yes, nature is undoubtedly read in truth and claw, yeah, and as I said before in a few videos, you know, the history of life on Earth has been a very, very bloody history. You know, we are up to our ankles in it, really. But that's not the same for inanimate forces. You know, stripped of will and stripped of... Uh, you know, if you take life out of the equation entirely and just think about deter pure determinism, physical determinism, as a set of um, physical, uh, chemical, biochemical... Um, yeah, those kind of processes. There isn't any... Um, there isn't any pain in that world, you know. There's, there's, it is, in fact, there's a lot of kind of um, sense of purity, I think, in that world, and innocence about the world of mathematics and the world of physics and the world of chemistry. It's only once you get into the realms of biology it all starts to get a bit sticky. Uh, so again, I, I suppose I'd just like to see that test done again, where instead of being primed with Francis Crick's book about biology people were perhaps primed with cosmos or perhaps primed with a book about physics or perhaps primed with something about um, you know one of those great books about maths introductory books about maths you know that, that, that kind of spin it out as this fantastic explanatory function or as I say about you know something about geology you know something about non-biological processes I wouldn't be at all surprised if that whole effect just dropped off, that whole effect of um, of our morality just being weakened, dropped away. And I think it's because we have this particular understanding of biology, which is partly correct, that, uh, that biology just, just you know, the nature of biology in the wild is pretty nasty at times and is a bit fascist and is a bit selfish and does cheat you know, and does all those things. Um, as I say, I think if we're primed with physics or maths instead, it'd be more interesting.